So let's go back to the history so people have got my involvement. Perfect. So I started doing sports science in 1981. That's when I really became committed. And the first thing we studied was hypoglycemia during exercise, because I was sure that hypoglycemia developed during exercise. And at that time, people were being encouraged even not to drink water during marathons. It was, it was quite a long time ago and quite different. And so we started experimenting and our focus was on the Comrades Marathon, which is 90 kilometers. And it was, became very clear that some elite athletes developed hypoglycemia and really struggled. And then there were examples of where they took carbohydrates and were able to finish the race comfortably, having slowed down, and then they take the carbs and then they do well. And so I was totally committed that carbohydrates were essential for exercise. And I bought into the idea that muscle glycogen depletion causes fatigue during prolonged exercise. So I went along with this and wrote the book Law of Running, and it's all full of carbohydrates. You must eat every single carbohydrate you can see you must eat, and you must load up on carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. And the last time I wrote it was 2002. Now, my career took a major change in 2010 because uh, I learned about the low-carb diet. So I changed that, that day, and within four months, I'd, my health had improved dramatically. I'd lost a lot of weight. My running was improving. And I started telling people that, listen, I've gone to this low-carb diet. Here's a guy who's promoted the high-carb diet, and I've now gone to a low-carb diet. And I wrote some articles, and the first response was I lost all my funding, like that. And I was killed. I was dead, dead in the water. Wow. So, And then my university kicked me out. Well, they didn't kick me out, but I just retired, and they exposed me in the press and say I was, a, I was no longer believable because I was promoting a diet on the grounds that it reversed type 2 diabetes, and that was a ridiculous claim, and so on. And then it's, I had to go to court to fight for four years because what they'd done, they tried to destroy my career. Now, during this time, low carbs, my type 2 diabetes reversed, and eventually in 2018, I won the case, and it was all over. And for once, I'd actually learned a bit about nutrition. <laughs> I thought I knew about human nutrition, but I really didn't. Because in medical school, we don't really learn it. And I'd maybe studied carbohydrates during exercise, but I didn't understand the whole, the whole body nutrition. And produced a really good paper showing that the crossover point shifted far to the right to about 85% VO2 max, which is when you're not meant to be burning any fat. So we published that one. And then the most recent paper, I said, well, okay, if it works at five kilometers, maybe it'll work at one kilometer because that's a real test. So we did the one kilometer time trials and found no difference. And But I'd warned him. I said, but if you find no difference, what the people will say, it's because the, the athletes had lots of glycogen. Even though on low club diet, they had enough glycogen for 1K. Then I said, so why don't you do six times 800 meter repetitions? But I didn't say, and he decided to do this by himself, on his own, I didn't say measure oxygen consumption and metabolism, hmm. which was the key thing. So anyway, surprise, surprise, there was no difference because what should have happened, according to the traditional hypothesis, after about three sprints, 800 meter sprints, their performance should have gone down in the low carb group because they've got no more glycogen left. You can predict they'd run out of glycogen after about three 800 meter repetitions. It didn't happen. They stayed exactly the same regardless of diet. But then the real killer was that they measured the, the oxygen consumption and the respiratory quotient, from which we can calculate, as you know, carbohydrate and fat oxidation. And the car fat oxidation just went up and up and up and up and up. So the more repetitions they did, the higher the, the fat oxidation. Hmm. And by chance, by chance, they were exercising at 86% VO2 max. And the textbooks say at 85% VO2 max, you burn no fat. 